Hey yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today we're doing a yin yoga class that does not use props. So this was a class that was requested by you guys in my private Facebook group for my yoga students. If you would like to join that group, the link to that is in the description box down below. I got so many great suggestions for videos that you would like to see. So I'm slowly working my way through the list, but if you have your own requests and recommendations, I recommend joining that group and just putting your own in. I try to do them all, it's a little bit impossible, but I do my best. I thought this one was a great idea. Yin yoga is definitely quite prop intensive. And I would say that the more beginner you are or the less flexible you are, the more props you tend to need and want to use in yin yoga. However, I know that sometimes we're traveling, we don't have props with us, and we still want to get like a really good stretch. So the poses that I'm gonna be doing today don't really need props. I'm kind of cheating. I have a blanket here. It's just because I still have a bone bruise on my knee. So I do still need to keep some padding, but you don't need a blanket. You really don't need anything in order to do this practice. So the first pose we're going to start off in is child's pose. So wide-legged child's pose, the big toes come together and the knees go as wide as you would like them to go. So the wider you have the knees, the more intense you're going to make this pose. So if you're not very flexible or if you're just starting your yoga practice, you might wanna have your knees only about hip width distance apart, especially since we're not using props. Otherwise you can go and widen them and you're trying to sit your hips towards your heels as much as possible and then walk your hands out in front of you and lower down to the floor. So normally I would tell you guys that if your head is not touching the ground, you wanna put a block or a blanket underneath you, but because we're doing this without props, if you need to modify, you can just put your hands underneath your forehead and support yourself that way. So try to find a position that works for your body. We hold yin yoga poses for a few minutes. So we wanna find our edge the shape that allows us to feel sensation in a pose, but not so much that it becomes hard to hold or hard to breathe or that you feel yourself tensing up in. You should always be able to breathe deeply and relax fully.
push into your palms to slowly walk the hands in inch by inch until you can lift yourself back up. So our next pose is going to be toe squat, which is what I'll be needing my blanket for. So toe squat, if you've never done this before, you're just leaning onto your knees and you can curl your toes underneath you so that you can then sit back onto your heels. This is a pretty intense yoga pose and you might need to move the little toe out of the way. And you can choose to either keep your hands resting on your thighs if that feels best. If you'd like to open into the chest and shoulders a little more, you can take your reverse prayer so option one is to just hold on to the elbows behind you. Option two is to bring the palms together with the fingertips pointing down. And then option three is to flip it, making this more intense with the fingers pointing up. And then you're trying to draw your shoulder blades down, pushing the elbows back, and as much as possible, pressing the hands together. And this is quite an intense pose, especially if you wear heels <laughs> or any kind of constricting shoes. Just try to breathe into the intensity. We have about two and a half minutes here. Carefully release the hands and you can bring your palms forward, untuck the toes and just stretch them back. Maybe take a few ankle rolls, whatever helps you release from this pose here. It is quite intense. And we're going to make our way into head to knee pose or sometimes called half butterfly pose. Extend your right leg out in front of you and you're going to bring your left foot to the inside of that right thigh. So we're coming into a forward fold. A little bit of a bend in that right knee is always a good idea. As you lift and lengthen the spine, try to ground the sit bones into the floor. And this is a passive fold, which means we're not pushing and pulling our way down. Just let gravity do the work for you. Turn the palms to face up to the sky and let your head dangle and be heavy. So usually I like to put a block or a bolster underneath my forehead and underneath the chest, but it's really not required for a pose like this. It's nice to sometimes play around with using your props and sometimes just letting gravity get you deeper into the pose. It's a great, great way to practice softening and not engaging the body. You might find that you end up folding a little further this way over time.
engage your arms and continue to breathe as you very slowly lift up inch by inch, not rushing the transitions, staying mindful. So transitions are also part of your yin yoga practice. It's not all about the poses. And let's switch sides. So the left leg goes forward. Bring your right foot to the inside edge of that left thigh. Sitting up nice and tall. And then exhale, folding forward and down. Again, letting gravity do the work for you. I like to turn the palms to face up to facilitate this. And you might find that one side is a little bit tighter than the other. Try to soften regardless. Push into the palms, just like before. Ease your way out, nice and slow. And we'll make our way down onto our belly for Sphinx Pose. So coming onto the forearms, palms flat to the ground. Pointing the toes back, lift the chin and the chest up. Think of pushing the head of the arm bones back and lengthening the crown of the head up so you're creating even more space through your neck. And if you find that this is too intense of a back bend, you can lower a little bit more and make it an easier back bend. Reach your tailbone towards your heels and stretch through the front body.
face down. We're gonna flip over onto our backs, making our way to reclined pigeon pose. So bending the knees, bring your feet flat to the floor and you can cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. Flex your right foot and feel that right thigh move away from the body. We're looking for a stretch into that right glute and outer right hip. This might be enough. You can stay as you are or you can reach through with your hands and pull the left knee in closer towards your belly. Head and shoulders are heavy on the floor, only using a little bit of arm strength. Carefully set your left foot to the ground. And before we go and repeat this on the other side, we're gonna take a laying spinal twist. So cross your right thigh over your left, and you can push into your left foot to lift your hips up and just shift them a couple inches over to the right to make it easier for both knees to drop down to the left. And then you can reach your arms out into the shape of a T, try to push your right shoulder into the floor. If this twist is too intense, you can always unwrap the legs and just let one stack over the other.
unwind and unwrap the knees. Bringing the hips back to center for reclined pigeon pose on the other side or reclined swan, sometimes it's called. Left ankle crosses over the top of your right knee and you can hold here or you can reach with your arms and pull the right knee into your belly. You're trying to push that left thigh away from your belly. Find some slow, steady breaths in and out through your nose. Set your right foot to the floor. Into our laying twist on the other side. Cross your left thigh over the right one. Move your hips a few inches towards the left and then let both knees drop down over to the right. Reaching out through the arms to help guide your left shoulder blade to the floor. So the chest faces up and we're really just twisting from the mid to low back.
Let's lift back up, uncross the legs. And we're making our way into Shavasana, our final resting pose. So you can do any little adjustments or movements here that are needed. And whenever you feel ready, stretch out the arms and the legs, turn the palms to face up to the sky. And really observe the way you feel now as opposed to when you first began this practice. Notice the shifts that have occurred, the tension that has dissolved. And let yourself be really heavy. Enjoying our last few minutes here of deep relaxation and rest. Begin to deepen your breath and wiggle fingers and toes, bringing life and energy back into this physical body. You can take a big stretch, reaching your arms up overhead, getting really long. And we'll turn to the side, use your hands to help you come up and take a seat, sitting in any way that is comfortable for you here. Close your eyes once you're there, and lengthen. Bring your palms together at the front of the heart, Anjali Mudra. We'll close our practice with a chant of Om one time. Inhale to chant, big breath. Namaste. 
Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this yin yoga practice without the use of props. I would love to know what you thought and how this went for you. Again, if you have any video requests and recommendations, I would encourage you to join my private Facebook group for my students here on YouTube. This is where I get most of my ideas now. It's truly a wonderful community, and the link to that is just down below in the description box. And if you don't already, please do subscribe to my channel. I put out new classes every single Thursday. Thanks again. And have a great day.